world, it's Vagabond here. We are currently in the city of Alapaevsk, which is located in Sverdlovsk region in the Middle Urals. Today is the beginning of my adventures around the largest narrow gauge railway in Russia, around Alapaevsk narrow gauge railway that connects the city of Alapaevsk with the remote villages of Sverdlovsk region. The total length of active tracks nowadays is approximately 180 kilometers. In the best period of time, this railway was approximately 500 kilometers long but nowadays this is still remains the biggest narrow gauge railway network in the whole country my narrow gauge train is departing in the evening now is the midday this is the Alapask railway station its main station of broad gauge railway i got here by this rail bus from yekaterinburg it runs twice a day and after four and a half hours of Riding a train, I'm here in Alapaevsk. Well, by Russian measurements, Alapaevsk is not a big city. It's actually a town, and here, such an ancient railway station building. Most definitely, narrow gauge railway is the main attraction of this city. It was constructed in 1898, and it's definitely one of the oldest narrow gauge railways in Russia. Its main purpose was to transfer passengers and cargo in form of wood and metal from local industries and this narrow gauge railway has a direct connection with the broad gauge station in form of this connection track that i'm currently walking following it for 20 minutes we will reach the biggest station on the narrow gauge railway which is sort of the local marshalling yard finally got to the place where broad gauge meets narrow gauge and now i'm staying on a flat car that is used for transferring trees essentially cut trees well by narrow gauge measurements this station is fairly big here are at least three trains that are like potentially can transfer cargo for example cross ties you can see some remains of birch here this flat car was constructed in ussr in 1970s so it's approximately 50 years old there is also some signs of signalization but it doesn't work and here are also some great examples of soviet narrow gauge wagons like this tank you can even observe some exit signals that have remained here but it's unlikely that they operate we have reached an interesting place this is the diamond crossing of broad and narrow gauge well diamond crossing is just a crossing without the possibility of turning left or right of changing tracks i know in united states for example this is a common thing but in russia they can only find such places at yards within the station limits at some branch tracks but not on main tracks and one of the most interesting places on the whole railway is this triple rail track here is the actual connection of broad gauge and narrow gauge so the very right rail is used both by narrow and broad gauge trains the rail in the middle is used only by narrow gauge trains and the very left rail is used by broad gauge trains here is a narrow gauge train station in Alapaevsk we will come here later in the evening and this is the actual depot with the placard claiming that this railway operates since 1898 the first week of June Lilac is still blooming we are walking towards the main train station of the city this building was constructed before the revolution it was actually built in 1912 look at these wooden columns but also look at this map of the railway network in the whole country of russia and also post-soviet territory so essentially this is moscow here is yekaterinburg and this is alapaevsk where we are currently at this is sverdlovsk subdivision of russian railways you see that railway network is highly developed in the european part of it but when it comes to siberia here is only baikalamo railway and trans-siberian one right now i'm going to the village 
which kind of neighbors Alapaevsk in this local train that consists of two seat carriages. I need to cover approximately 20 kilometers in this train, so it's not going to be a long ride, just 20 minutes. The ticket here is also very, very cheap, something like 30 American cents. I'm temporarily leaving Alapaevsk and go on a broad gauge commuter train to the village of Verkhnia Sinichiha to take a narrow gauge passenger train that runs across that village and terminates there. On the Alapaevsk narrow gauge railway there is a number of local trains connecting small villages near Alapaevsk. So another forest industry on the right side seems to be the main kind of industry in this area because here is quite a lot of forest, limitless taiga limitless resources. Walking towards the train station building I accidentally found this self-made dresine that doesn't have engine and most likely it is used as a wagon simply as a flat car. Despite the tiny sizes of this train station here is a whole train station building, dispatcher, waiting hall and while waiting for a passenger train we can observe some self-made motor cars that run on diesel fuel. They are used by locals who live in remote villages that are located on the railway far ahead from here. So they basically use it as their daily transport to get to the village, to the city, uh, leave it here, go to work, return, get back at, on tracks and return to their settlements. That is the interior of the train station building. It's actually the waiting hall. This is the ticket office. You have to knock to this window and they will sell you a ticket. I bought most definitely the cheapest train ticket ever. It costed me just five rubles. Again, not that much passengers, but still interesting. passing by the ruins of Sinichiha steel mill. Well, it was the industrial village with pretty massive plant that was definitely historically worth. However, nothing is remained, as we can see. Well, that's the interior of a passenger wagon. This is a classic example of a passenger narrow gauge wagon with the only difference in form of stove heating because these trains operate even in the winter and therefore it's quite cold in this area therefore they installed this stove here and we have arrived at the terminal station of this train On the same train I returned to Ugolna station after which I hitchhiked to Alapaisk to take a long distance narrow gauge train that inspired me on this adventure.
Here is the longest narrow gauge passenger train in Russia. It runs from Alapaisk narrow gauge station to Sankina station in Sankina village, located in 110 kilometers from Alapaisk. The journey takes five and a half hours. The train departs from Alapaisk in the evening and arrives at the terminal station at one in the morning. There are several villages along the way of the train. Each village can be reached by car if necessary, but train is a popular means of transport here. The train runs four times a week on Monday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday. The train consists of three wagons. One seat class wagon and two sleeper class wagons. I'll take the sleeping car on the way back to Alapaevsk. The ticket from Alapaevsk to Sankina costs approximately 100 rubles in seat class and 170 rubles in a sleeper. There are six intermediate stations along the way. At each station the train stops for several minutes. Freight trains with timber also run on this railway, but I didn't see them during my journey. Again, we are arriving at Ugalnaya station. We have been here today twice. That is the actual consist of train. Three wagons, one of them is seat class and two plats cart. We will ride them on the return train. After departure from Alapaevsk, the train arrives at Yenichnaya station, located in the village of the same name, 30 kilometers from Alapaevsk. The population of the village is declining every year, and the general abandonment was clearly visible. However, there is a lovely wooden station building with a waiting hall that is still open for passengers. In addition, there is kind of the depot that looks semi-abandoned but probably still works. At the next station in the village of Strakinka, one passenger got off the train. 
Just over 50 people lived in this village in 2010, so 12 years later this amount must be even less. On the way back, I will visit this village by an unusual means of transport and talk to locals, so watch the video till the very end to see how is it to live in Russian middle of nowhere. At midnight, the train arrives at Muratkova station. Just one hour left to the terminal station. Well, we have just arrived at the terminal station of our train, 113 kilometers from Alapayevsk. In half an hour, this train will go back to Alapayevsk. Now there is going to be some shunting, and then it will go back. I spent the night in my tent and in the morning went exploring the village of Sankina. This is how the station looks early in the morning on Monday. Not a single person, aside from a dispatcher, not a single train, I mean locomotive. Well, perhaps there still be some actions today, because I have already heard the locomotive twice. First of today at night and just 10 minutes ago when I was packing my tent. In Sankina there is a locomotive and wagon depot. There we can observe some interesting units of railway transport. For example, these tanks that can be uh, designed both for transporting water, drinkable water and oil. Also, I would like to point your attention on this caboose this is actual caboose, which is coupled to the very end, to the very rear of the train. Here is a window, from there you can observe the movement of a train. Well, here is also a diesel locomotive, class 2-4. It's like age old, but it's still operative. If we follow this trail down the railway for, I don't know, maybe for 50 kilometers or maybe even for 60, we will end up in the village of Kalach, which is populated by just a few people. And uh, that would be the terminus of this railway. I'm just casually walking by the railway and accidentally found this motor car in the bushes. Most likely it is operative by locals who live in remote places and just come here for work and stuff. That is actually the third cross that I have found on the very edge of a settlement located on this narrow gauge railway. My guess is that they are placed on the edge of the settlements to basically bless the travelers who ride this narrow gauge railway. The village of Sankina stays on the river Tura. It's massive and it has a railway bridge. The bridge itself is new. It's fully reconstructed, but look at these constructions. These are ice breakers. Well, during winter, the layer of ice becomes very thick here and to prevent uh, the ice from breaking the pillars of the bridge, its foundation, I mean. Locals created this kind of uh, protection in form of construction consisted of rails, metal pipes, metal bulks. During spring floods, during the period when ice melts, it breaks the ice and rescues this bridge. The vibe in this village is rather northern than Uralic, I would say. It's genuinely accurate. The houses, the dwellings are in reasonable condition. No trash, no stuff. This is a public water source. You basically open this door. I have already opened it. You kind of do this. 
here is fresh water. People plant flowers and vegetables here. The season is just beginning. The fire department in Sankina is also entirely of wood. There are two carriages for fire machines. Such outstanding wooden fans. I've just talked to a woman from village administration and she told me that most of people who live here are retired. Most people simply don't work, but those who work, work in forest industry, on the railway, and most likely they just grow plants for themselves and that's it. So, not that much job opportunities. Anyway, I do like Sankina. It's so accurate, it's so attractive. Just, just look at this house. This is one of the funniest rides I've ever had in my hitchhiking experience. I'm riding in this kind of uh, trailer with equipment for fishing. And here we are. We have successfully got to the village of Muratkova. This is the next train station after Sankina if we move towards Alapaevsk. Formerly, here used to be sort of the depot, but nowadays here is sort of the siding, but the train station building is working. And an interesting fact that school students from here reach Sankina, there is the school, uh, by diesel locomotive. So they basically depart a special additional train for school students to here from Sankina to transfer students. The village of Muratkova was founded in 1922 along with the timber industry enterprise. The enterprise was large and rich. During the heyday of the village its population reached 1000 people, but local valuable timber crops ended that led to the closure of the timber industry and the village began to die out. In 2018 only 150 people lived here, 15% of the maximum population that has been decreasing for decades. The specificity of Muratkova's life is determined not only by the small number of its inhabitants, but also by its remoteness from civilization. The road linking Muratkova with the mainland can become impassable in muddy conditions of fall and spring, but at any time of the year the connection with civilization is provided by the Alapaisk narrow gauge railway. A few years ago a waiting room was renovated in an abandoned building of the local railway station. This was done primarily for children and teenagers who take a special school train that runs to Sankina. This is the train station building of Muratkova. And talking about the infrastructure in the village, here must be mobile connection of a local mobile operator, which is uh, widespread only in Sverdlovsk region, but not elsewhere. Here is a source of water and a grocery store that is marked on the map. You guys remember that I showed you the cross in Sankina that kind of symbolizes the God bless, as my assumption. We are now in the forest, again, kind of on the edge of the village, and guess what? Here is another one, another cross. Why they are here? There is nothing. This road is barely used by forest trucks, and that's it. Well, I'm not going to focus on the review of this village because it's more or less the same as other villages. What I can say in a nutshell is that its condition is worse than the condition of Sankena village because this is the dead end. Here is like the end of the road and the only way to get here is either by narrow gauge railway or by car during normal weather without rain and stuff because country road 
is the only road that connects this village with civilization. After visiting Muratkovo, I hitchhiked to the village of Yelnichne, the wooden station of which you have already seen. There is no direct highway between the villages, so I spent the rest of the day on hitchhiking country roads. A resident of Yelnichne, Vladimir, gave me the last ride straight to the village. He was definitely inspired by the idea of exploring the narrow gauge railway and offered to give me a free ride on the so-called Pionierka to a neighboring village. Pionierka is a light homemade motorized rail car. In the 50s of the 20th century, serial motorized rail cars were produced. Then, 70 years ago, the territory of the USSR was riddled with thousands of kilometers of narrow gauge railways. The majority of them have been closed. Nowadays, such rail cars are mainly used by hunters, fishermen and mere residents of remote villages, where narrow gauge rails still exist. Pionierka is sometimes called mad stool. This slang name quite accurately characterizes this means of transport. Pionierka develops a speed of several tens of kilometers per hour, but given the curvature of the tracks, riding Pionierka doesn't look safe. Nevertheless, in just 15 minutes we reach the village of Strakinka. Так, ну, я хотел сейчас тут полетать немножко. И так. Да я прям здесь буду его запустить. Я прям здесь его запущу. About 20 people live in this middle of nowhere. I managed to talk to a local resident, who turned out to be an acquaintance of Vladimir. Здравствуйте. А там по дороге едешь, там Мугай проезжаешь, там деревня тоже, 1617, деревни старые, у нас города моложе, Алапая с 1650 какой-то, Каменск-Уральск 1701, а тут деревня, представляешь, уже это Ермак. Вот он по это. По туре потом на Тагилу, а с Тагила до Чусовой 80 километров. Представляешь, он эти ладита перетаскивал. 80 километров. А потом по Чусовой в Каму и...
Сейчас пойдем он здесь. Да? Он тебе Здравствуйте. Да, Мы тут с вами ехали, тебе да. махали и махали. Сережка да. Пырин, да это. Он, расскажи ему. А, просто я просто хотел узнать ну, вот, что-нибудь вот про этот ну, населенный пункт. По скакалейке, вот езжу по Алапаевской. И хотел посетить все раздельные пункты, которые здесь есть. И вот раз представилась такая возможность, просто хотел немножко с местными жителями тоже пообщаться. Вот я знаю, что раньше это был большой крупный поселок. Тут сколько тут вообще людей жило раньше? Около тысячи, говорят. И предприятия были, и все. Здесь промхоз. Больница была своя, школа была десятилетка. Я первый выпускник школы в 56-м году. Десять классов здесь скончил. Работал на станции, начальником станции. 41 год. Вот тут станция была. Видели? Да. По узкоколейной железной дороге здесь с самого начала желез возился? Древесный уголь возили. Для заводов Синчихинский, Мед и Алапаевский. Вот войну только на древесном угле и работали. Кокса-то не было, да? Кокс с Украины была, когда Украина немцы захватили. Все, вот только... Надежда на древесный уголь. Не зря сталь-то выплавлена на древесном угле. Считалось лучшей. Третью черку тут сделали. Тигры чуть не в упор стреляют и не может прошибся. Он группу сказал забрать, увезти на завод. Узнать, что за сталь. Ему сказали. Сталь выплавлена на древесном угле. Древесные. А печи-то закрыли, стали лес рубить. Вот. Своя база была, продукты привезут сюда. И с участков потом на мотовозах. Мотовозы были маленькие. В Синичихе был металлургический завод, который относительно недавно снесли. Да, градообразующее предприятие было. Вот завод там пять... Паровозов депо было в Синчихе свое. Пять паровозов только работали на завод. Широкой да не было. По УЖД все. Вот перегрузка, а потом широкая то подошла и паровозы не надо стало. Депо ликвидировали в Синчихе. Мне вот уже рассказали то, что здесь так интересно было устроено, что Конечно. Панчина, да, там жили вот военнопленные. Известны ли вам какие-то случаи конфликтов между ними? Я помню, еще пацаном был, ехали вот в поезде, и сколько лет было, лет 7-8. Вот в Осиновке этого немца посадили в больницу ехать, а ехал фронтовик без ноги, как раз в этом поезде. Он увидел, а он на него с костылям, а тот что он с конвоиром был все, тот мне дал голову так понурил, вот он не виноват, тоже этот немец, вот. а тот тоже без ноги, вот с войны с этой, и не дал этот конвейер, от он бы его ударил костылем, может, вот такой случай помню, а тут вот они на бабушки на много без модена много их жило. Панчина да. их много было. Нет, они на это девятом... вот дорогу ту строили. Не больно кто заболеет, заболеет, прямо у линии выкопает ноги да, хоронит. После Сталинградской битвы их да, куда-то кормить их. Чем ну, это группировка купается, когда. Ну, чем-то занять их надо. Вот они, вот эту дорогу все ровки. Помню, что они строили. Когда начался общий упадок? 
Сразу после развала Союза, или это еще при Союзе, начали люди отсюда уезжать? Вот, Деспромхозы стали закрывать. Все. Это когда начало происходить? Какие года? Горбачев как к власти пришел. Вот какие-то все хозяева появились. Горбачев как к власти пришел, это в 85-м. Да, 85-й, 86-й вот год. Передали ленинградцам это все дело, а им только прибыль надо. Они об людях нисколько не беспокоились. Все, вот давай, все развалятся, развалятся, все. Закрывали, все поехали кто куда. Но я доработал еще. В 97 году вышел на пенсию. То все нормально было еще. Поездов-то сколько шло. Ой. Думаю, за линии так. По 12 груженных проходило в сутки. Самый пик 65-й, 60 е года это все. Каждые 5 минут со ставкой. Вот я говорю, по 12. Было. По 12 груженных вот проходило за сутки. It's 4 a.m. at Yelnichna station. There I spent this night. The general atmosphere in this village is depressing, to be honest. Quite a lot of abandoned dwellings. Formerly, there were more than a thousand of residents. Nowadays, barely a hundred. Despite the fact that they paved the road here, now it's easy to get to this village by car. Despite regular passenger traffic on this narrow gauge railway, This settlement is still dying. Back to Alapayevska, I decided to test local Platz card. These are absolutely unique wagons that are only used here on this railway. This Platz card differs from a regular one in terms of the size, because of course narrow gauge railway is smaller than broad gauge, and therefore here are small, smaller amount of places, 24 totally, but also two levels. This bank is also usable. Well, after riding trains on narrow gauge railway, I decided to visit their railway museum, which is located on the territory of the depot. And while walking towards it, I noticed some interesting metal constructions placed on flat cars, and it seems that these constructions are parts of ice breakers. I don't know whether these two snow plows are parts of the exhibition or not, because they can technically be operative. Here it is, the museum, located right above the workshops. Alapayevsk narrow gauge railway has its own museum. There you can get acquainted with the history of this railroad. You can observe some real size exhibits, things, some particles of trains, wagons, some you know, some utilities that were used by people who constructed this railway. So a lot of interesting things to see here, and I highly recommend you to visit this place. And also look at this wonderful model of the diesel locomotive. Well, there is a lot of interesting materials to show you, but I would like to pay attention more on this map that illustrates the whole uh, kind of uh, railway, all of the lines that have ever existed here, including railway stations with the dates when they were constructed. They also show some liquidated stations and stuff. 
and the total length of the tracks that were used in passenger service reached 600 kilometers in best period of this railway in Soviet Union, but total amount of all of the tracks, total length, uh, including the tracks that didn't have passenger service, reached a thousand of kilometers which made this railway the longest one in Soviet Union. All right, we have visited the museum of Alapaisk narrow gauge railway, and that was the terminal station for this video. Highly recommend you to visit this area, this place to ride these narrow gauge trains. Um, thank you guys for watching me. I believe see you later till the next video.